Hi everyone. So today we have a really fun question on symmetry and divisibility of primes. So we're going to be looking at a couple of really interesting divisibility techniques. And yeah, let's just get started. So this is the problem number two from the Cyprus Junior Balkan Math Olympiad Team Selection Test, and the year is 2022. And in this video, we're going to be looking at divisibility techniques. We're also going to see how we can exploit symmetry that is given to us in the question. And then after that, we obviously have book sessions for National Math Olympiads and at the end, a similar level challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so the goal is to determine all pair of prime numbers, p, q, that satisfy this given equation. So we have this given equation over here, and there are a couple of things that I notice when I see this. The first thing is that it's a symmetric equation. So if I replace p with q, and if I replace q with p, the equation is exactly the same. It's a symmetric equation, which means that if p, q is a solution, then that implies that q, p will also be a solution. Right? This is obviously because it's symmetric. And then maybe how can we can how we can maybe proceed with this? I'll just split it up into two cases. Case one is p is equal to q, and case one when they're not equal to one another. So if equality holds, then that means that two pq plus one is p raised to the power four, and this is uh, very easy to see that this never holds because this is zero mod p, right? Similarly, this is also zero mod p, so this also needs to be zero mod p. In other words, one needs to be a multiple of p one needs to be a multiple of p, right? It needs to be a multiple of p, but since p is prime, this obviously does not hold true. We need to determine the number of prime numbers. Well, one could be a multiple of p if p was one, but p is a prime, so it can never be one, right? So obviously p is equal to q does not hold true. It does not have any solutions whatsoever. Case number two, case number two is obviously p is not equal to q. Now, because this is a symmetric expression without loss of generality, I can assume that P is greater than Q. Well, it's really not making a difference because we are anyways considering the permutation of the solutions as well. Okay, great. So maybe how we can work with this. So I think it's good to see that PQ plus QQ plus 1 is P square Q square. This is the question over here. Now, this is 0 mod P square. This is obviously again 0 mod P squared. So effectively, qq plus 1 also needs to be 0 mod p squared. In other words, p squared needs to divide this quantity, right? And this is essentially the sum of cubes, so this can be factorized as q plus 1 times q squared negative q plus 1. And after this, I can very conveniently split this up into like only and only three cases. So case A would be that p divides q plus 1 and p also divides q square minus q plus 1. Case b would be where p divides or rather p square divides q plus 1 but p does not divide the other quantity q square negative q plus 1. Case c would be where p square divides q square minus q plus 1 and p does not divide q plus 1. Right. So we can very conveniently split this up into three cases, case A, case B, case C. These are subcases within this entire case 2, where we are discussing where P is not equal to Q. And up to this point, we obviously have zero solutions for P is equal to Q. So maybe let's just take these cases one by one and explore how this works. So case 1 is P divides Q plus 1, and P also divides Q square minus Q plus 1. So if p divides q plus 1, that means that p should also divide. So this implies that p should also divide q times q plus 1, right? So effectively, p, square, p should divide q square plus q, and p also divides this other quantity over here, right? So p divides q square plus q minus q square minus q plus 1, right? So which implies that p, square, p just divides q square plus q minus q squared plus q minus 1. Let me just cancel these terms. So which implies p divides 2q minus 1. 
So this is a really common technique to kind of reduce this quadratic down to a linear expression over here. And we can actually reduce this further because we know that p divides q plus 1. So if p divides q plus 1, that essentially implies that p also divides twice of q plus 1. So that implies that p divides 2q plus 2. But since it also divides 2q minus 1, it should divide the difference as well. So which implies that p divides 2q plus 2 minus 2q plus 1. This gets cancelled. That essentially implies that p divides 3. And since p is a prime, since p is a prime and it divides 3, p has to be equal to 3. And when I plug this back into the original expression, we had, I believe, pq plus qq plus 1 is equal to p squared q squared. When I plug this back into the original expression, I get q cubed minus 4q squared plus 28 is 0. And it is to be noted that q is a prime. So obviously, this is 0 mod 2, this is 0 mod 2. Both are even. So this also has to be even, because 0 is also even. So q is equal to even prime. And obviously, q is equal to 2. And you can actually see that q is equal to 2 does satisfy. So 3, 2 is a solution. And this is obviously when we were working for this particular case, right? Um, we were only working for case A. I should write case A actually. Right? Now let's move on to case number B. So what's case B? Case B was when P squared divides Q plus 1 and P does not divide Q squared minus Q plus 1. So if P squared divides Q plus 1, that essentially means that P squared should be less than or equal to Q plus 1. But we essentially assume that P is greater than Q, right? Or essentially Q is less than P. So if Q is less than P, so P squared will be less than or equal to Q plus 1, which will be less than P plus 1. So effectively, we get P squared is less than P plus 1, which is incorrect for P greater than or equal to 2, and it's very easy to see that. So it has no solutions for this case, right? This case B, our assumption that P squared divides Q plus 1 is incorrect, and we have no solutions over here. Now, moving on to the next case, the next and the final case, which is case C. And over here, we have P squared divides Q squared negative Q plus 1, and P does not divide Q plus 1, and we have something similar over here as well. So P squared needs to be less than or equal to Q squared minus Q plus 1. But this is definitely less than Q squared, which is less than P squared. So you get P squared, which is less than P squared, this is obviously incorrect. So again, no solutions over here. So 3 comma 2 is our only solution. Can I say that? Well, almost. You see that this, uh, the expression is symmetric. And we had somewhere assumed that P is greater than Q. So via symmetry, you're also going to get a condition where Q is greater than P. Or in other words, you can just simply see that if P comma Q is a solution, then Q comma P will also be a solution, which I had written right up top over, over here. Right, this, this statement over here. So P comma Q is a solution, then that necessarily implies that Q comma P will also be a solution. So 3 comma 2 is a solution, 2 comma 3 is a solution, and these are both valid solutions. So you have two solutions in total. The symmetry does help us a lot, you know, in kind of reducing the problems, especially when you combine them with a lot of other things like divisibility techniques or certain other stuff. But the important thing to remember is that to not make certain silly mistakes and to always remember that if it is a symmetric expression, you also need to consider the permutation of the solutions. So yeah, that was a neat solution for this. Okay, so moving on, we have certain book suggestions for National Math Olympiads, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Jell, Functional Equations by Venkata Chala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharikin, Elementary Number Theory by Siapinski, Graph Theory by Harari, and Combinatrix by Brualdi. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but charging problem. And this is again related a little bit to primes and a sort of a Diophantine equation. So we need to find all primes P, Q, R with natural numbers N so that it satisfy this given equation. So this is a pretty nice problem. And if you're able to solve it or make any progress on it, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions.
the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com